everyone. Welcome to another Tip Tuesday. Don't get confused. I know it's Friday. We were a little bit late. This guy right here has been busy all week. He's hard to catch and I had to have him for this video and I'll tell you why. I've been into camping and the camping lifestyle for years and years and some of this stuff still confuses me and I don't want to give you misinformation. We all know that it's way too easy to get misinformation, oh, yeah. uh, misguidance from a friend or family. So what we want to do is talk all about weight distribution, anti-sway. Josh, I think you'll agree we've seen a huge influx of new and first-time campers this year, right? Oh yeah, and last year, yeah. Which is awesome, right? Yeah. But along with that comes people who aren't really sure about components that they need, why they need those components, and maybe even the purchasing of some wrong components, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let Josh just go all through weight distribution, anti-sway. I'll probably jump in and ask him some questions. But as always, uh, if you have any further questions, leave a comment down below and we'll be sure to grab Josh and re-answer them. So Josh, take it away, bud. Part of also what we see is not only confusion about what it does, but people that do research on their own and, mm -hmm. and buy their own stuff um, don't necessarily get everything that they need right. to set it up also. And sometimes people are confused about, you know, if we're telling them, hey, we're going to put this E2 in with your deal to get you set up. I've even had people that come in and think they still need to buy like stuff like this uh -huh. in order to make that work. It's like, no, you don't. We have everything you need here. You don't need any of that stuff. And the problem, what we're finding out is when people want to bring their own stuff, something like this is a 5,000 pound capacity. A lot of times people don't think about the, the weight that this is designed to carry. So if you come in and get a 30 foot travel trailer, you, you know, you're pushing the limits. And then they bring a ball that, you know, they find one that has the right size, that right. They fit on there. Well, this is a 3,000 pound or 3,500 pound capacity. So they're already setting them up so for we're, failure. We're mismatched, we're possibly breaking, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and that's that's gonna be bad news for somebody if that happens. Um, so so let, me, let me ask you real quick, we'll just jump in right now. So if I just buy my camper from Walnut Ridge today mm -hmm. and I get my E2 as part of my package deal, these components are already going to come into that, correct? Yeah, they, it, you don't see it here because uh, there's there's different uh, shanks that go with this for different heights. So that's mm -hmm. another thing that people don't think about. Their trucks are raised up a little, or the newer trucks now being four-wheel drive just sit higher anyway. And so sometimes it takes a, a different size shank. So you don't see that here. But when you get a hitch from us on your deal, everything you need to tow that properly for your weight of the trailer and what your truck can handle will be set up um, with that system. You, okay. you, you shouldn't have to bring anything in. Except yourself. Yourself. <laughs> and even newer trucks have a, a, a bigger receiver, two and a half inch receiver. Um, if you don't have the sleeve to reduce it down, um, we even carry that stuff too. Okay. So, um, but yeah, important to get this and I would say do your research. Because mm -hmm. you're going to find people that's going to tell you, oh, you don't need all that. You know, that's, you, you won't need, you won't need to pull it with that. Well, they have a different truck than you do. Yep. They pull a different type of trailer than you do. They don't go as far as you do, maybe. Right. Maybe you're taking trips all the way down to Gulf Shores or somewhere where you're on the road long term. I would think you would want some kind of sway control and weight distribution unless you like bouncing up and down exactly. the entire way. Right. Or, you know, white knuckle steering because the trailer's doing this behind it every time a semi gets near you. Right. You know, so uh, there's there's important aspects so, of it. weight distribution, let's start there. Mm -hmm. Break this down. So I'm going to take it for what it is. That's literally distributing the weight evenly across the truck instead of just on the ball. Is that how that works? Yeah. yeah. Think about these handles back here, like handles of a wheelbarrow. Mm -hmm. And so the higher you lift that up, then that, that weight's shifting forward. Mm -hmm. So it's taking it off of the ball so the truck's not squatting down. So that's so, going to help with squat. It's going to help with traction probably because it's evening out. The yeah, weight. you could actually you could actually crank these up. If you had these so far in adjustment too high, you could actually take make the back end feel a little loose. Really? Yeah, yeah. you could take too much weight out. So there's Depends another the truck, reason but, why you should have it perfect. Professionally yeah, set up the installed, right way. so you're not more. So you could actually make yourself more dangerous with one of these yeah. than without oh, yeah. one at all, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. If it's not set up properly, uh, it, it's 
it's not going to tow properly. You're going to know. I mean, if you're if you're a first time camper and you've never pulled something, even if you have this setup wrong, you're going to know, or at least something's not going to feel right to you. If it feels like you're fighting a trailer all the time, then something is not right. Right. It needs to be corrected. Either it's not the right weight, it's not set up properly. It doesn't, it doesn't have the right pitch on this. There's a lot of factors to set this up properly to, to get its full potential. So I'm your next door neighbor. You just bought a truck or a camper and I have weight distribution. I've been camping for years. I've got a big super duty truck, right? Mm -hmm. And I say, Josh, don't worry about having them install that for you. I'll do it for you. The mistake there is your truck your trailer, pretty much everything is completely different from my experience. So it doesn't mm -hmm. matter that I've been doing it for 20 years, it's completely different, right? Completely different. And uh, the tools it takes, the, people don't think about that. You know, somebody says, oh, I got a big enough wrench, we can tighten it down. Well, they need to be torqued certain specs. You know, last thing he wants the ball to come off, you lose a trailer. <laughs> you really know? bad. Uh, the side's gotta be torqued. You don't want this thing adjusting on you while you're towing it if it if it slips down if everything doesn't get tight properly there's a there's a some washers and a spacer thing that goes here there's a bolt that that's down here on the other side that tightens puts the pitch on this thing because mm -hmm. this is slotted i mean there's a lot of variance to set that up so yeah your neighbor probably knows a lot about camping and has towed for a long time and understands how to do that but you know did they set their own hitch up and how long ago has things changed since then right vehicles are different i mean that vehicles have uh self-leveling you know stabilization on the back ends of them now right uh, with airbags and stuff so that's going to change how the weight distribution reacts to it and how it has to be set up you have to make sure you're doing stuff like every vehicle's different right and and every trailer is different right so you need the the two paired up correctly to so, get a good towing experience. Let me throw another one at you and just see how you react to what you say, okay? Okay. So I had a friend who will remain nameless and he bought his camper at a different dealership, okay? okay? When he originally bought his camper, he had a different truck and they sold him weight distribution, anti-sway. Okay. When he got his new truck, the guy said, take that anti-sway off there. You don't need that. Just use the weight distribution. What do you Chain think style weight distribution? They'll, they'll change? Yes, old chain style. So now he has no sway. Correct. So he has no sway control. Correct. <laughs> what he's used to pulling with mm -hmm. a sway control on there, keeping him fairly straight down the road, especially beginning of April, how windy has it been? In oh, Florida. yeah. Crazy. You know, he, up to 60 mile an hour gusts sometimes. He, why would you not want sway control? It, even just because you got a bigger truck doesn't mean that the trailer's still not going to sway behind you. Right. It's still going to react to the environment and traffic and and how you're towing and all that stuff and you have it why wouldn't you use it that's what i would say <laughs> so to your point yes if you have it you might as well use it and especially you get a bigger truck you might as well just get rid of the weight distribution keep the sway at that point <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah right the truck's not going to squat as much if you got a, a bigger or a, a let's say a heavier duty truck Right. That, so it's kind of even counterproductive there. So we didn't even, you just kind of mentioned something that we didn't even get into, which is the squat of a truck. So now we're getting into people talking about airbags on their truck. Uh, I forget that thing, but it actually bolts onto your leaf springs to help keep that, like active suspension. Yeah, super spring or something. There's a, yeah. there's a bunch of those. So you can get lost in this really, really quick. Mm -hmm. Or... You could have a customer that goes out and spends thousands and thousands of dollars, puts airbags on their truck, and does this and does that, and buys all these, and they may not have needed half that, right? Right. right. So probably reading forums and stuff and finding out, oh, this style truck's known for, you know, like say Dodgers have a little bit, uh, not weaker, but uh, the, the suspensions, their ride is better, right? So they they tend to squat more because they're taking the the. The bumps and stuff in the road and making a more comfortable ride the suspension isn't as tight um so people might read into that and say okay well i need to add all this stuff because the trailer's really going to squat it and all that so you put airbags everything else you may not need it this weight distribution might be plenty to make it a smooth ride or you don't even hardly notice so it's not only distributing the weight because that's another big thing these the, the weight of this like your towing capacity is, is one thing your towing capacity with weight distribution is another mm -hmm. so people sometimes think they can't 
buy certain trailers because oh it won't tow that much based on what the owner's manual says well you have to read it with weight distribution right your towing capacity goes up so you could probably get a bigger trailer right but it's going to require you to do this and those it. that's definitely a question i mean i know that's in the manual but that's something you should definitely discuss with your salesperson or a, a technician or something hey here's what my truck is here's what its tow capacity is what is it with the weight distribution like am i okay am i in a safe range with this and that's what we run into with people buying their own stuff and bringing it in a lot of times for one they don't have everything they need to set it up this is what, what they don't tell you on amazon or whatever sometimes unless you really research is you know it doesn't come with a shank because they don't know what size you need so maybe you have to get a different one it doesn't come with the correct ball for your unit um and then you get here and then you don't have the tools to put it together it's just going to make your experience go down right, right there you know right when versus if you talk to people who do it every day and could find out exactly what you're towing with what you plan on buying and then we can match up the correct I know when I bought my first camper from Walnut Ridge, I pulled up the day to pick up. It was already on there. I brought my truck over. You guys put it on there. I backed up. Never had moments trouble. So yeah. let me ask you one other question. We'll wrap it up, okay? Yeah. What if I pull up, I buy my camper, I pull up with my truck, and I say, I don't want any of this stuff. No. Well, how do, how do we handle that? Do we advise them? Do they have to sign something because it makes them unsafe? Well, how does that work? Yeah, I really don't want people leaving without at least – the bare minimum for weight wise, mm -hmm. because that's it, a liability at that point if something happens and we didn't do our part to, to inform you, hey, that's not safe. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, a chance of some very bad things happening and we want you to get to the destination. We have a lot of people that look, I'm pulling at one time to the campground and it's getting parked there in a permanent spot and it's never leaving again. Right. I understand you want to take the risk. You don't need all this set up for the one trip you plan on never taking it out of there then then you don't you know have to necessarily have all this right sign this waiver for me saying you understand the risks that you're taking you know what you need equipment wise and that you're going to pull it or you know at the very least you have one that's the proper <laughs> the way correct way to get it there you know your pull your, your towing may not be a very good tow but if you're only doing it the one time you know you maybe you can make it we don't suggest it i would suggest you always have the proper equipment but I understand when people are doing that. Yeah. Depends right. on how far they're going. So, in conclusion, we're not saying that you have to buy this from us or the one that any dealership says this is the one you want to buy. There are There's Amazon options. deals yeah. and options and everything else. What we are saying is, is it can be very confusing. You could be missing parts. You could be getting wrong parts. And you could be setting yourself up for failure if you don't do your correct research, right? Yes. So it's either make life easy. So let us do it for you. <laughs> let them do it for you, or take your time, do your research, it can be done. Um, but I mean, your advice is go with what your dealership tells you, right? I would say, yeah. Well guys, there you go. Josh, thank you so much. Well, I, we threw a lot at you. So if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I know Josh would be happy to answer those. It's all about education. It's all about safe camping. It's all about the lifestyle. And if we're not getting you from point A to point B so you can relax with a cold beer and hang out with your friends and family, we're not doing our job, right? Correct. So Josh, thanks again, buddy. I really yeah. appreciate it. Thank you.